So next we have the biceps brachii. This is the muscle that pops up or bulges when someone makes a muscle. The bicep is called biceps because it has two muscle bellies, often called heads, the long head and the short head. The long head is sometimes called the lateral head because it sits more laterally on the arm. The short head is sometimes called the medial head because it sits more medially on the arm. The biceps brachii attaches to two bones, the scapula and the radius. It does not attach to the humerus, even though its muscle belly sits anterior to it. Specifically, the short head originates from the coracoid process of the scapula. Make note here, I said coracoid, not coronoid. The coracoid process, which means crow's beak, is located on the scapula. The coronoid process is located on the mandible and the ulna. See what I did there? Now, the long head of the biceps brachii is called the long head because it has a long tendon that originates from the supraglenoid tubercle and the superior portion of the glenoid labrum. The glenoid labrum is a cartilaginous structure that runs around the outer rim of the glenoid cavity to deepen it. This long head then continues down the arm through the bicipital groove, which is also known as the intertubercular groove, because it's the depression located between the greater and lesser tubercles of the humerus, intertubercular. Both the long head and short head of the biceps brachii insert upon the radial tuberosity, or tuberosity of the radius. They're both the same. The function or action of the biceps brachii is to flex the forearm at the elbow. By pulling upward on the radial tuberosity, the biceps also supinates the forearm, especially when the elbow is flexed. And since it crosses the shoulder joint as well, it flexes the arm at the shoulder. The innervation of the biceps brachii is the musculocutaneous nerve. The blood supply comes from branches of the brachial artery. The brachialis muscle, which sits underneath the biceps brachii, forms a shelf for the biceps to sit on. It attaches to two bones, the humerus and the ulna. Specifically, the brachialis originates from the anterior distal shaft of the humerus and inserts onto the coronoid process of the ulna and ulnar tuberosity. Remember, coronoid is on the ulna. This muscle only crosses the elbow joint, so it acts to flex the forearm at the elbow, and that's it. Even though the biceps brachii is more famous for flexing at the elbow, the brachialis is actually the prime mover, or the muscle that's most responsible for the movement. It's innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. The blood vessels that supply it with blood are the radiocollateral and radiorecurrent arteries. The coracobrachialis, located in the armpit region, attaches to two bones, the scapula and the humerus. Specifically, the coracobrachialis originates from the coracoid process of the scapula and reaches down to insert onto the middle one-third of the shaft of the humerus. This muscle crosses the shoulder joint and acts to flex the arm at the shoulder. It's innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve, which pierces the muscle, and this helps students to identify it on dissection both the muscle and the nerve. Its blood supply is from the branches of the brachial artery. Your instructor may ask you to name the three muscles innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So let's practice here. Pause the video if you need time to think about your answer. Okay, are you ready? They are the biceps brachii, the brachialis, and the coracobrachialis. If you were able to name them, good job. If you had trouble, you may need to go over them again. Up next, on the back of the arm, we have the triceps brachii. It's called the triceps because it has three muscle bellies, or three heads. There's the long head, which is in the middle. Just lateral to that is the lateral head. And just medial to the long head, we have the medial head. The triceps brachii attaches to three bones, the scapula, the humerus, and the ulna. Specifically, the long head originates from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. 
the lateral head and the medial head, which is sometimes known as the deep head, both originate from the humerus on the lateral and medial sides of the radial groove, respectively. All three heads insert onto one place, the olecranon process of the ulna. Now this muscle crosses two joints, the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. So all three heads will extend the forearm at the elbow. But the long head, however, which crosses the shoulder joint, is going to perform an additional movement. Since it attaches to the infraglenoid tubercle on the scapula, it will also extend the arm at the shoulder. Interesting thing about the triceps is that some scientists have found that the three heads of the triceps don't work as a single unit. The medial head is the most active of the three heads, being recruited by the nervous system most often. It's also the head that takes the longest to start to fatigue. It's also been found that the lateral head is the strongest of the three heads. This muscle is innervated by the radial nerve, which runs through the radial groove located on the posterior aspect of the humerus, between the origins of the medial and lateral heads. Now the radial nerve runs with an artery through the radial groove, and that artery is known as the profundobrachii artery, or deep brachial artery, which incidentally is the artery that supplies blood to the triceps. The anconius is a muscle that's often overlooked, but in my experience, if it's strained, tight, or inflamed, it can cause pain that feels like pain inside the elbow joint. Now the anconius attaches to two bones, the humerus and the ulna. Specifically, it originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. It inserts onto the ulna at the lateral aspect of the olecranon process. This muscle crosses the elbow joint and acts to extend the forearm at the elbow. It's innervated by the radial nerve. Its blood supply comes from the profunda brachii artery, or deep brachial artery, the same artery that supplies the triceps. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhealth.com.